1939. 1989. The year 2039. Tonight, we will take you on a voyage from the past, through the present, into the future. Here now, Paula Zahn and Forrest Sawyer. Good evening. Tonight, we're going to turn your television set into an electronic time machine, so we can take you on a voyage into our future 50 years from now. You won't hear talk of colonies on Mars, or cities under the sea, or even global disaster. We're going to show you a world that is possible, that is within our grasp today, that you or your children will be a part of. What will our everyday lives be like in 2039? How will we travel? Will medical advances help make us healthier? Will the fight against crime be even more brutal than it is now? Of course, no one really knows. We're just making educated guesses. But that's a game we've been playing for centuries, from the prophet Nostradamus back in 1555 to modern science fiction writers, all painting visions of worlds that may be waiting for us somewhere up ahead. In fact, we've all sat in the dark watching those visions shimmering on our neighborhood theater screens. Good or bad, silly or scary, our brightest images of the future have come from the movies. Rogers in the 20th century. By turning a little dial to project us ahead in time, we're able to be right with Buck and his friends in the wonderful world of the future. Do you realize the immense task we shall undertake? We shall excavate the eternal hills. We shall make such use of the treasures of sky and sea and earth as men have never dreamt of. The Billows feeding machine will eliminate the lunch hour, increase your production, and decrease your overhead. Well, anybody hungry? What's that, chicken? They look pretty good. Well, they're getting better at it all the time. If you feel you are not properly sedated, Call 844. Failure to do so may result in prosecution for criminal drug evasion. The once great city of New York becomes the one maximum security prison for the entire country. The rules are simple. Once you go in, you don't come out. Oh, my God. You maniac! You blew it up! Some of those dreams about the years ahead are frightening. Today we know that science and technology have limits and sometimes dangerous consequences. But just 50 years ago, in 1939, things were different. Back then, even while we hung on the edge of World War, we were entranced by the glittering promises of science. So entranced, we put together a huge World's Fair, a giant fantasy land sprawling across New York's Flushing Meadow and pay tribute to a future so bright, it took your breath away. Our faith in science was in full bloom then, and 25 million visitors came here to be astonished by what experts guessed and hoped the future would bring. Of course, they were guessing about the world we live in today. How close did they come to reality? That's our time machine's first stop, a spring day in New York, 1939. The world at the fair. But the fair was more than dazzling displays of music, dance, and fashion. It was a monument to new visions of tomorrow, a promise of things to come that would soon be within everyone's grasp. Nylon stockings, electricity, but robots with social graces? Quiet, please. I'm doing the talking. The longest lines waiting to see the future were waiting for a 15-minute ride into 1960, GM's Futurama. They take their places in the circling chairs for a glimpse into the future. The technological wizardry used by this exhibit was as futuristic as the world it promised. During a simulated airplane trip across country, speakers with precise timing whispered into the ears of those who waited for hours how they were going to live 21 years later. And now we see an enlarged section of 1960's Express Motorway. Traffic moves at unreduced rates of speed. Safe distance between cars is maintained by automatic radio control. Even today, radio-controlled safe driving is still futuristic. But the superhighways and the cars to fill them with were there. 
In fact, General Motors underestimated the growth of its own industry. By 1960, there were more than 60 million cars on the road. GM's crystal ball in 1939 saw 35 million cars and the need for American cities to make room for them. The rights of way have been so rooted as to displace outmoded business sections and undesirable slum areas whenever possible. There were so many miracles to see and touch for the first time, but some ideas were so far fetched for 1939, the only way they could be imagined was in a cartoon like this one. Instant food. Well, I never. <laughs> Prefab houses. Affordable cars. Look what I got, Randy. <laughs> These were fanciful predictions that exceeded their 1939 reality, but they were predictions that became, at least in part, our 1989 present. Mechanical powder puffs may still be an idea that's ahead of its time, but muscle savers for, as they put it, the little woman, were not. Because men are beginning to realize how much lifting and pushing the little woman has to do around the house, more and more muscle savers are being designed to make the little jobs easier. Imagine seeing a washing machine for the first time. Imagine a home today without one. But it was the 1939 World's Fair and its avalanche of household appliances that gave us a new definition of American culture to come with push-button conveniences. The amazing machines and gadgets that almost seem to think for themselves. How about electric kettles that turn off automatically? Electric coffee pots that brew the coffee and keep it hot? Electric toasters? It's the dawn of a new day. These seductive visions of tomorrow with their promises of a better life. It's a paradise. Were seen and heard by millions of fairgoers, most of whom were born into a world without electricity, cars, airplanes, or telephones. So imagine yourself wandering the fair and walking into the RCA Pavilion and for the first time seeing a new marvel of science and technology. Television. You can just lean back in a comfortable chair and relax and watch the game. The earliest sets had seven-inch screens and cost $600. If you calculate that a subway ride to the fair cost a nickel, and it now costs a dollar, $600 would be the equivalent of $12,000 today. There were only 200 TV sets in New York City, and the first broadcast was FDR at the fair. And I declare it open to all mankind. Most of those predictions might seem a little naive, even a little bit silly in 1989, but what's really remarkable is how accurate their images of today's world turned out to be. And now it's our turn. Fifty years from now, what will your home be like? Will you still drive a car? How far will the computer revolution go? It's time to fasten your seatbelts. We're going to try to find out the answers. Our electronic time machine is departing for the year 2039 just minutes from now.